again is Irma Shaf Bahar with Gabriela USA. Um, it is a deep honor to share the stage with this incredible group of revolutionaries up here. Can we give them another round of applause? At the beginning, when Brooke asked who was organizing in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, I don't know if you all noticed, but I was the only one that was still sitting down. And I started shaking, being like, oh my gosh, right? And then, as soon as everyone started talking, I just started feeling more and more at home. And feeling like a lot of the folks up here, in many different ways and forms to your organizing and your contribution to advancing our work, has raised me and our organizations. And um, I was really nervous at first trying to prep for today. And, you know, usually I over prep. My partner tells me that. And what I really wanted to share um, specifically about Gabriella's work um, is, in, is in really the form of what a lot of folks were talking about, the importance of international solidarity work. Um, so up here is a particular picture um, that is in the Women's March that we created an anti-imperialist contingent called the Rise, Resist, Unite contingent. Um, I'm gonna talk about it later, but I just wanted to um, point that out up here. So how many of you know Gabriella? Yeah, oh my gosh, I love that, yes. Um, so Gabriella Philippines is actually celebrating our 35th anniversary this year, um, which is a huge contribution, yes. And we all know um, that Filipino women have actually been in resistance and have been struggling for our liberation and freedom since Spanish colonization, since the, Ameri since the US colonized us, and since the Japanese invasion up until today. So even if Gabriela has been in existence in the Philippines for 35 years, we know that our women has always been against the, ex the exploitation and oppression of our bodies and of ourselves, right? And so I wanna really recognize that. Um, here in, in um, the US, Gabriela USA is celebrating our 10 year anniversary and actually here in the Bay Area, uh, Gabriela San Francisco, what was formerly known as Babae, which means women in Tagalog, was the first Gabriela organization um, out of the 11 chapters we have in the US. So it was founded in 2004, and since then we've been able to grow our numbers locally here in, not locally, here in the US and also internationally. So when I was thinking about what to talk about specifically, because Brooke was like, you know, share a story about, you know, the founding of, you know, um, anti-imperialist women's movement. And first of all, it was a breath of fresh air where people are still talking about anti-imperialist work, right? And really saying anti-imperialism and not just talking about patriarchy and not just talking about capitalism, right? Because oftentimes in the women's movement, we often just think that males are the enemy. Right? And I think it's really important that we did start it off with not just the definition, but what does it actually mean to be anti-imperialist or anti-imperialist feminist. And we have to also recognize at this time, specifically of Trumpocalypse and the rising of anti-fascist dictatorship all over the world, all the more it's important for us to talk about not just the history, but about how we're continuing to pass it over. So in 2004, Babae started specifically um, doing work around domestic violence issues in the Filipino community in the Excelsior district. And from that, you know, talking about domestic violence is something that's taboo, right? Because of the colonization and militarization in the Philippines, a lot of Filipino women still think it's okay that their husbands can cheat on their wives and men have their own needs. Right, still to this day, the Philippines is the only country where divorce is not legal. And Gabriela is actually one that's still campaigning against that. And so when I think specifically about the legacy of Filipino women's resistance here in the US, I do think about our organizations like Gabriela, you know, in terms of doing political education. Um, I was making a list of all these different mobilizations and marches and actions. And I was like, wow, we did that all in a grassroots level. Sometimes people think we're a nonprofit. We are not a nonprofit organization. We have $5 membership dues. And so, 
And, and you know, when I think about how long we've been able to continue, it is because of connecting our struggles with other folks in the community here in the U.S. and then also abroad, right? And so the call in me to continue to build um, different Gabriellos, not just in the U.S., but all over the world, is because in the Philippines, the number one export is actually not coconuts or resources, it's the Filipino people. So trafficking is actually legal and it was part of developing the country. They use migration as a form of developing um, countries and actually at the United Nations, they use the Philippines as, as an example. So how many of you have seen a lot of Filipino domestic workers or caregivers here in, right? And then also how many have you gone in a cruise ship, and most of them are Filipino workers, right? It's okay if you went on a cruise ship. I went to Alaska with my family. It was like, you know, family time, right? But so overseas Filipino workers, you know, they're actually in almost every part of the globe, specifically because $35 billion is sent specifically to help the country be afloat, right? So for me, when I think about someone who's an organizer and still really a baby, I got organized in 2006, so I've only been organizing for 13 years and continuing to learn from incredible comrades here on the stage and also I see folks who have marched side by side with all of us. And I think what's important is connecting not just our struggle, but when we talk about anti-imperialism and fem feminism, it is who is our target and who is our enemy. Right? So the reason why I wanted to show this particular picture, you know, when I moved and came to the Bay, um, you know, I love that a, a, a lot of folks talk about international, the International Women's March, right? I remember coming here in 2014, there wasn't a lot of activities like there was before, right? In the hundreds or even in the thousands. And I remember coming from New York, I was like, oh, this is something everyone did on March 8th. This is like, everyone should be doing it. So it kind of died down, right, in a sense of like what happened to the women's movement. And then Trumpocalypse came up, right, and then the Women's March came, which is great. And in, in, and in terms of being anti-imperialist and really thinking about who our enemy is, it kind of got watered down. And some folks were forgotten, right? Some voices were silenced, and then also um, some folks also felt like it wasn't trans or gender nonconforming or non-binary um, inclusive, right? And so we as Gabriella in 2015, we were like, let's do one in Oakland. Let's do an International Working Women's Day celebration in Oakland. And that really, from the grassroots, we work closely with Mujeres Unidas Activas, Activas, which is a domestic workers coalition. We work with our Palestinian allies from AROC, we work with critical resistance, and so forth. So from 2015, it wasn't about having like 50 endorsers or sponsorships. It was the fact that we were putting a particular demand and a call that was talking about being against US militarization. Right, it was talking about saying no to the US wars that were bombing folks all over the world, right? So we were not only bringing it back specifically to like women workers, but we were really raising that analysis saying that we have to connect our struggle to an anti-imperialist lens, right? And through that, the reason why I thought I wanted to share that particular story was I was so moved. Because in 2015 in Oakland, we had close to 350 people that were there that were youth, trans, black, brown, you know, women and children that were there. And we were able to uplift the stories of, you know, the shirt waste factory workers that were burned, you know, and killed. And we were able to talk about international solidarity in the, in the reason why we had to stood beside Palestine and Haiti and with all the disabled folks and trans folks and also talk about bringing in immigrant and workers' voices at the forefront. For me, that work um, continues to live on. And so um, the story really is a love story, a continued revolutionary love story of how each and everyone in this room and on the panel continues to breathe the militant women's movement through showing up. Right? And so yesterday there was a rally specifically because of the bombings in Gaza. It was like a one day turnaround. I couldn't be there, but you better believe that there were Filipinos that like showed up, 
right? So it really was about building our international solid solidarity and our collective resistance and our collective power. And I moved because when I was growing up in Hawaii, I was like, oh my God, I want to go to the Bay. There's so many queers and lesbians, right? Because I was totally in the closet there and I didn't have all these different resistance and fights. And so really the organizing work that folks did there made, makes me feel safer today. Right? And so I just want to acknowledge that the work that came before us, it is up to us to continue to grow the movement and continue to contribute and really connect specifically our struggles, right? Um, and I'm super inspired that this is the closing panel specifically for the conference, right? Oftentimes people forget that we need not just like the academics and the scholars, we need everyone. We need them, we need our movement lawyers. I see our movement lawyer, Rachel, there, who's, who's always protecting us and like our human rights defenders. We need our youth, right? We need our children, we need our church. We, we, we have to really build the united front. Right? And when we talk about that, let's focus specifically on the issue and not our differences. And what I'm going to end with specifically, it's a small quote, small, it's a short quote, by <laughs> Lorena Barrios. She's the founder of Makibaka, which is a revolutionary women's um, underground movement in the Philippines that had to go underground because of martial law. This is my favorite quote. The new woman, the new Filipina, is first and foremost a militant. The new Filipina is one who can stay whole days and nights with striking workers, learning from, the, learning from them the social realities which her bourgeois education has kept from her. She is a woman who has discovered the exalting realm of responsibility, a woman fully engaged in the making of history. No longer is she a woman for marriage, but more and more a woman for action. Thank you, everyone.